Okay, maybe I should keep it in my pants and string you along, but this game is really good. So sit back and let me explain why you should buy it. Armillo is an action platformer created by Fuzzy Wuzzy Games, with developers previously employed by EA and Radical Entertainment, who I didn't know by name, but they're the guys behind Prototype and the recent Crash Bandicoot games amongst others. They used to make games for Xbox Live, but moved away from it because Microsoft is obviously the devil. Okay, not really, the Wii U is apparently just a better fit. Armillo at its core involves the player controlling a ball that rolls around a 3D planet. There's a fixed camera which feels reminiscent of the Mario Galaxy series. The levels play out as a maze-like series of corridors, containing doors which require either keys or tasks to be completed to progress. As you're effectively controlling a ball, momentum is a good part of the feel of the game. You can't just turn on a dime, and the weight of the character feels spot on. At the very start, you're basically just a glorified pinball, but before long you'll be able to boost and jump which lets you control yourself much more fluidly. And with a little bit of practice, you should learn that if you died it was certainly your fault. You know how some games feel patronizing? You know, you boot up the latest Mario game and you're almost at the end before the game brings forth any real challenge. Well, as a Wii U exclusive made by a developer with a name that didn't exactly inspire confidence in me that I might feel as a 23-year-old male part of the target audience, I have to put my hands in the air and say, good job, thanks, more, please. At first glance, the visuals and mechanic of rolling ball on rails looked pretty rudimentary, and I wasn't optimistic it'd be much more than shovelware. I definitely didn't think it would appeal so strongly to someone who relishes the hard parts of platforming games. Oh, how wrong I was. I mean, it definitely isn't complex, but it should easily provide even a hardened gamer with six hours of compelling, non-repetitive and refreshing platforming. Armillo absolutely nails the difficulty curve. The early levels are slightly challenging and you shouldn't expect to get gold first time every time. Now, it doesn't ever get Meat Boy levels of difficult, but a couple of the special stages did cause me to involuntarily laugh at how hard and reasonable the task in front of me was. If you purchase the health and life upgrades, you'll probably be able to beat the harder levels in an ugly way with just a few tries, but you'll need to do it pretty if you want a gold medal. And that'll take some serious concentration and effort, as a single hit can scupper your plans. Each level has three things to get, stuff to spend, things to rescue, and a special stage to unlock. It's rewarding getting it all and it won't all be achieved on a single run. This is definitely a game to 100%, and it knows when to hold your hand and when to give you a shove and tell you that you should have jumped, you big idiot. Visually, the game isn't as polished as expensive games, really, the graphics are adequate bordering on good. Whilst the lava motif was a bit monotonous at times, there are other environments, and the game certainly makes an effort to switch between them frequently. There's a candy land, some sci-fi stuff, a castle… Honestly, what you see in the previews may not be doing it justice. Also, there's one huge factor that makes the visuals much more appealing. The story. Yeah, I guess that's kind of cheating, but the characters are great. They aren't hugely developed, but the confidence of the writers to drop you in without over-justifying anything pays dividends. I can't think of a single character in the game who didn't need to be there, and the characterization makes the visuals much more endearing. There are maybe a few groaners when it comes to gags, but I mean that in a good way. There was no sense that the writers or artists are just trying to tick boxes to make you feel all gooey inside. There's even a cross-promotion <laughs> gag on one bonus stage that stung as an EU resident, but it's all delivered with heart. The sound across the board was excellent. The voice acting works, the general effects are great, the main stage music occasionally got a bit too modern epic dance or whatever that genre is that I'm too much of a grumpy bastard to enjoy, but the bit that really stole my heart was the special stages, of which there's one for every main non-boss stage. They all have chiptune music and as you see, play on a 2D plane. These levels could easily have worn thin, but they put the same attention to detail to making things not feel repetitive as they did into the main game. They really are great. You can try to finish them collecting all of the energy blobs, or you can run to the end. The former helps you unlock more things, and the latter contributes way more to achieving a gold on these stages. One major gripe I have, and really the only gripe I have, was the frame drops. They were pretty consistent in a few areas. One time I struggled on a particularly tricky bit of platforming because it felt like I was on ice but the next time I tried it there was no slowdown and it made it much more manageable. The problem doesn't come up a lot, but I have to admit that at its worst it did give me a headache, so I really hope they can iron that out somehow. There were also some bugs, but not ones that should dissuade you from buying the game since the developers have already stated that they're working on a patch. Basically, I was unable to get gold on many of the special stages even if my score was way above what I needed. On some it worked and on others it didn't. There were also reports of some people not getting an enemy spawn required to unlock a special zone on one of the levels. I really could talk at length about this game, but I don't want to give too much away. Its only real flaws in my eyes are what you'd expect from a first time indie release on a console. With that in mind, I still recommend this game at full price, largely because I want these guys to make more games. It's certainly worth the money and it should be enjoyable for everyone.